All right, so hello everyone. This is Monsef Afker, and thank you so much for joining us in this new call of your divine uniqueness. Um, yeah, thank you for your presence, and uh, sorry for the delay. I had some issues with the connection. Uh, I just moved, and uh, yeah, still testing things here. So yeah, thank you for your patience, and uh, also very excited that Caroline Oceana Ryan is, is with us here on the show. I think it's it's been a few years that's the last time she joined us, and uh, how to say, like the, the first time like I knew about her, I was reading uh, um, um, messages for light workers that she channels from the collective, and really I, I felt the message was really powerful, heart-based, empowering, and also really you feel it in, in your heart. It's, it's a guidance, but at the same time you feel the truth um, within it. And also I, I received support from her, like for I think I've been five years on her uh, membership, and really the support I received was very, very helpful in in doing. Sometimes it was a little bit uh, difficult and unknown for me, like for the next steps, and um, maybe uh, especially in, I mean, both per personal and also my uh, in 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 how I serve in in the Tel Summit, your divine uniqueness, and really um, really love the message that messages that I received from her, the energy healing, it was really, really powerful. So um, yeah, um, I'm glad that she's back with us today here on the show. And the subjects, um, it's, it's, it's really exciting. It's something that we didn't talk much about the show and really happy that today with Caroline, um, we will talk about the channeling and uh, the, the subject is learning to channel, bringing, bringing in the wisdom and energies of the higher realms. And also she is a channeler, author, speaker, and spiritual growth counselor. And um, so, yeah, she will be sharing about the subject and our abilities to, to, to access um, wisdom from our higher self, from spirit guides and other beings, if, um, if there is an agreement between the two. And also like how to go through that, through that process, um, if there is some doubts and also fear about that so we will be talking about that and also um she will be answering your your questions so if you have um if you want to ask your question as always you can raise your hand by pressing reactions then raise hand on zoom app if you are on youtube you can and uh yeah youtube you can type your your question on the chat box and also on the chat box on zoom and if you are on the phone you can raise your hand by pressing star nine and um yeah so we that's Caroline. Welcome back to the show. Happy to have you with us today. Thank you so much, Monsef. Really lovely to be here. And hello to everyone. Yeah, wonderful. And yeah, so in the beginning, I would love if you can tell our audience who are new to you a little bit about yourself and your connection with the collective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, for myself, I can tell you that I've I've talked to angels and higher beings, including, for instance, everybody's got a higher being in their life who's their higher self. And I've talked to the, to them starting when I was a, a very small, very young. And I always knew there were angels in the room. And as I got a bit older, maybe in my teens, 20s, and definitely by my 30s, I would write out a question in a notebook. And then I would bring in the answer. I would let them answer through me. And I wouldn't have called it channeling in those days. I would have just said, well, I know they're there. I know they can speak to me. I'm a writer. Um, I, As a poet, I was used to sort of going into a stream of consciousness where I wasn't in control. I was just allowing myself to write what was coming forth. And so channeling was just very natural for me. And then about 10 years ago, I thought, well, there are all these channeled messages online and what why don't I bring someone through? And I thought maybe I'd bring through an archangel, but I, I couldn't decide in the moment. And within a day, a group came in. I thought that they were just maybe the Ashtar command. I thought they were all benevolent ETs. It turned out to be that and much, much more. And they said, we have messages to light workers for light workers, would you write them down and share them, please? And I said, yes, okay. And I let them know uh, these messages need to be kind of direct and really helpful, not just nice sounding phrases. 
Uh, they need to be something that people can really uh, feel involved in and empowered by, as you were saying. So um, they started to speak through me and I always get a beautiful feeling of love and reassurance from the collective. I asked them what their name was and they just said, the collective for we speak is one, which is a beautiful nod to oneness and unity consciousness. And I always get this lovely warmth and reassurance and support and higher perspective. I can be in my own personality self muttering about this and that or weighed down by the tasks of the day. And then I bring them in and they're just smiling. They know that all is well. They relay that to me. And then I, as the conduit, help them relay that to others. And it's a really beautiful process that has just meant so much to me. So that's how I got started. And I'm very, very thankful for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much for, for sharing about that. And so maybe in, in the beginning of that process, um, we may have, like, how, how do you recommend approaching that, especially if we are not... Um, if we are not uh, maybe uh, very trusting the beings that are approaching us and how to know to differentiate between like benevolence and, and other, other beings? Yes. Well, that's a good question. That's a very important question. Um, when I was in my teens, I was very depressed and likewise at times in my 20s. And I would feel the presence of entities who were not friendly, not positive. You will know immediately um, if you are meant to channel, even just for yourself, that's fine, that's wonderful, but give yourself a moment and ask yourself as you're bringing something in, if you sense a presence in the room, do I feel better? Do I feel lighter and stronger? Am I standing taller? Um, do I feel like this is someone who's uh, being very kind and supportive every single time they come in? Or do I feel a bit smaller? Are my energies kind of contracted and small? Are they criticizing or uh, finding fault or trying to make me feel bad if I don't do exactly as they say? These are all really important questions to ask. So there's no need to worry. Once you start to channel and you want to bring in your higher self, let your higher self know that. For, spend a day or a week just saying to them, I would like you to speak through me. And you know, they, they won't deny you that. Now, it might come across in different ways, but as they come in, let's we're presuming that you're going to start with your higher self. That's a good place to start. Our, and, and your higher guides who are already with you all the time. But as they come in, um, you're going to feel their presence in the room, chances are, if you're at all empathic. And you're also going to realize that these people have been with you. These beautiful beings have been with you your whole life since you were in the womb and the soul came in somewhere around the sixth or seventh month. The soul comes into the fetus and they have been with you that whole time up to the present moment. And it's so beautiful uh, how much they care about us. These are old friends. Your guides are old friends. You chose them for this journey because you knew that they were wise and, and empowered and believed in your empowerment. You talked to them before you incarnated about what you wanted to accomplish in this life, what areas of soul growth and expansion, what areas of uh, healing, old trauma, old shock, old upset, etc., that you um, experienced in other lives. All that revisits us when we come back into another earth life. And you knew at the time that you chose them and of course, your higher self is just who you are in the higher realms. And you knew they were there to protect and assist and support you. They don't protect you to where they hold you back from experiencing making mistakes that you and I kind of need to make in order to figure things out, in order to realize what's not right for us, and in order to get stronger. But they will absolutely share all of this really beautiful wisdom. It, but we've got to ask. We've got to open up to it. And I know it can get frustrating. So you go through the day, you're sort of like, where are they? And what's going on? Am I going through this alone? And all that sort of a thing. And I totally understand. I've been there. I've done the same thing. Uh, but it's very important to open up and realize inwardly, there's all this love and support for me. As soon as I start talking to my spirit team, my guides, angels, and higher self, 
or as soon as I bring in the collective, I'm amazed at, again, they're never rattled. They're always at peace. They might see a difficult, difficult situation, but they remain centered and they want to impart that to you and I. They want to assist us in moving to a place where we're just always centered and calm. And that takes years. That takes some work. I'm probably not there yet. I've gotten a lot better um, than when I was younger. Uh, but just be aware, again, when you're wondering, is this a benevolent being? Is this somebody who's good for me? Is this somebody who's pretending to be an angel or pretending to be my higher self? And they're not really. Ask yourself, how do I feel as I hear them speaking? Or maybe you're the sort of channel where you're drawing, sculpting, writing music. How does this feel as whatever format you're choosing, how does it feel inwardly? Uh, are you more expansive in that moment or are you closing down a bit self-protectively? It's Everybody has gut reactions. So start using them every moment and you can start practicing with um, is this a good movie for me to watch? Should I watch this news report knowing that it's got violent images that will upset me? Should I email my friend back immediately? Start asking questions that don't exactly add up to, you know, world shifting events, but you're going to start practicing with how you feel about something inwardly and listening to the the cues, the inner cues that you get, whether something's going to be positive for you. Maybe it's good, but not right now and on and on. I use muscle testing as well, um, where you just say, form a circle, the tip of the thumb and forefinger, one hand, do the same with the other, but that fingers, those fingers you link into the first uh, hand and then if you ask your question, should I have a salad for lunch today? I'm getting a yes for that because I can't pull the hands apart. Uh, should I have five candy bars? No. <laughs> See if you can pull your hands apart. If you can, very easily, that's a no. If you can't, that's a yes. Um, some people also do this thing where they're hold, they'll hold yes in one hand and no in the other hand. doesn't matter which hand. Ask your question and see which hand slowly rises on its own. And, um, you know, that's not totally foolproof, but it's a help. It helps you to start zeroing in on what does my intuition say? What, what is that inner voice saying? And that is the voice of your higher self. So you're already channeling at that point that you get a clear answer and you key into that inwardly and you're listening. And then you never have to stress, uh oh, is this a dark being? Over time, you'll figure it out. You'll know. You'll know immediately. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. That, that that was very very helpful. And also, you, you mentioned uh, earlier, like when talking about uh, about connecting to other beings, that we connect to our higher self first. And mm -hmm. many times in in the spiritual com community, we try maybe not all, but many times it connecting to other beings feels mm -hmm. like more important or more advanced than just connecting to the higher self so yeah. why, why 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 is this we have we may have that belief and why is it very important to connect with our higher self first well that's that's a great question as well and really um you know if you're not connected to your higher self if you kind of if we kind of diminutize that in our minds and just say oh my higher self can't be anybody important. What's the point of that? <laughs> then you're you're missing out a lot. You're missing a lot because we have come in to ascend into becoming our higher selves in this particular lifetime. And it's okay if people leave the earth without before they've done that. That's all right. They might come back or they achieve it in some other way. That's all right. But the point of all this beautiful light pouring into the universe and pouring onto our planet right now isn't only so we can connect with the ascended masters or the archangels and say, wow, you're so important. You're so phenomenal. And I really love connecting with you. We can do that. But you and I are also very important. Every single person listening to this live or on replay, incredibly, incredibly important. It's, um, you know, the, we've got this old hierarchical idea in our heads where we're saying, well, 
you know, my higher self is probably a nice person, but this archangel over here, or Captain Ashtar, this, you know, this ascended master Kuan Yin or Saint Germain, they're where everything's really happening. And so I want to open up to hearing from them because I don't want to um, only offer people information or only offer myself information from the higher aspect of me and the higher realms. I would like something bigger than that. And it's okay to do that, but it's not necessary to feel small compared to an archangel or an ascended master. And connecting first with your higher self is crucial because you and I always need direction and support for our personal lives. We need it very, very definitely. It's not just a matter of, well, I, I'm a spiritual healer or counselor and I bring through all of this information and this is wonderful, this is what I do, etc. If you can't connect with your higher self, you might not be in the right job. They're always going to tell you what your job is, whether it's paid or unpaid or you know, like mothers don't get paid very often, do they, for their work? That's an incredibly important job, probably the most important one. And yet it's not high in the hierarchical uh, list of important jobs, for instance, in Western culture, particularly not in the US, Canada, et cetera, UK, these countries where uh, to be well-educated and well-accomplished and have an important job that's so important, that's just so amazing. And um, it's real. It's lauded as being, uh, okay, you've substantiated your presence on the earth. In fact, you don't need to do that. You're already precious and invaluable. You're already a beautiful divine being just in human form, that's all. So when you connect with your higher self and you don't devalue that, you realize the importance of it. You're connecting with the higher realms in that moment. You're connecting with who you are in the bigger sense. You're connecting with um, the memory of what you put into your life chart for this earth life. And you're starting to remember Oh, yeah, I, I, I wanted to accomplish this or it's intercultural education is really important to me, for instance, in my life um, or for some being an animal communicator, whether you're paid for that or you just do it as a gift to others. So they understand what their precious animal is going through. Um, you might be gifted with mathematical skills or with being able to understand what babies are thinking or experiencing intuitively, even when they're pre-verbal, all of that is invaluable. All of that is on an equal footing. So speaking to our higher self, that's your first step up. That's your way of saying, all right, well, I'm gonna take on this channeling thing, but I'm gonna do it with the active support and communication with and connection to my higher aspect because they are going to have information on this that I do not have, and they are going to be able to open doors for me, and it just lifts my vibration. That's my first higher being that I connect to is my higher self. My vibration is lifted, and from there I'm going to more easily attract beautiful beings, angelic legions maybe, or just one or two angels, the angel of love or charity or victory or joy, uh, maybe an archangel, maybe a group of benevolent ETs, maybe your soul family. And they can be many wonderful things. I've met people who have a soul family who are angelic. Some are a lovely mix of um, non-terrestrial, extraterrestrial beings. And some are a mix of those, all of those. And some are you know, humans <laughs> and um, really amazing people. And uh, some are people who are still growing and still learning, still a little bit stuck in the lower vibrations. But as you connect to your higher self, you're going to sail above that. And you're going to sail above the ego mind, which is the, the presence constantly reminding you, oh, you've got this and that to do today. You can't take time to meditate. No, no time in nature because you've got to return all those phone calls or those emails. Oh, no, no, you don't have time for a healthy lunch. Just grab anything. You know, <laughs> the ego is not looking out for us, but the high heart always is. And that is also the presence of your higher self. So I would tend to look at it that way. And I would tend to really value uh, the beauty and the, the power of your higher self, because there's nobody like them, whether you call them he or she or them, doesn't matter. They are just pure spirit and they're, they're here to light you up with 
this beautiful reassurance of how invaluable you are and how full of joy and love you are. You know, you came in full. All of us came in full of joy and love, only pure love for humanity. And then, of course, the 3D vibration comes in and kind of squashes us and different experiences kind of uh, bring us down, sometimes even fragment bits of who we are. And yet um, all that can be healed and regained. And that's what the higher self is wanting to offer us. Yes. So that that would be my p- input on that one, Monsef. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Um, yeah, th- th- thank you for, for that answer because it really feels that um, like our role in, in, in that is very important. It's, it's not just we are bringing some information or energy uh, through us, but it's, it's more like co- co-creation and collaboration. And also another question is that there are different types of channeling. So how, can you talk more about those and how to know which one is more relevant to us? Well, you know, that's a a huge question because um, there are people who know automatically, inwardly, how they channel. And, you know, there's this, uh, of course, this phenomenal composer, Friedrich uh, Handel, who composed, for instance, um, The Messiah, this beautiful collection of um, astounding compositions. And some people know some better than others. I, I know it could be because in my family, we played it on, on the record player every Christmas. And um, he apparently, when is, is he, re- he received all of that as a download, all of those compositions, the, the whole suite as a download. And uh, he wouldn't put up with any interruptions. He didn't even eat any, very much at all until for, for days until he got all of that written. And in some ways, you, no one would have stopped and said, well, you know, uh, Mr. Handel is, is clearly a, a channeler, <laughs> but he was channeling. Likewise, the great poets, um, the great playwrights, if you look at Shakespeare, you, you look at all of these uh, astounding artists, they were allowing something to pour through them that was of a higher vibration and a higher orientation and also a wisdom much higher than what they walked through the city streets with, or much higher than what they experienced as they were buying bread or fruit in the market. And many of them understood that. And some of them didn't. They considered it just an altered mental state, which it kind of is in some ways. Um, But I would say to people, well, what do you feel that you can just lose yourself in because you love it so much? And for some people, maybe that's being an architect. Maybe that's being a musician or a poet. Maybe it's sculpture or drawing. Sometimes for some people, it's teaching. For many, it's writing. For many, it's um, speaking extemporaneously where they just let something flow uh, and channeling can be that. It's not even extemporaneous because it comes from uh, elsewhere. Um, For some people, it's going to be healing energies or empathic uh, conversations with uh, the crystals of inner earth, plants, trees, the earth herself, animals, children, babies, etc., teenagers who are too depressed to speak, etc. Um, everybody has to ask themselves, and this is part of what we do in this program, Intro, intro to Channeling, everybody has to ask themselves, what format, what might come through me in ways that feel very, very natural? And what I'm going to ask right now, in other words, it just it just flows like water flowing. What I'm going to do now is ask uh, all the higher selves of those present, whether you're here live or on replay, for some input on that, please. And the collective and all the higher selves right now, they're flowing energies to you to allow you to see yourself as a channeler and to know where, how you are a conduit for higher energies. All right, so interestingly, they're saying, you don't have to make it an art form, you don't have to make it a profession. For some people, when they're singing, joy flows through them, and that's their contribution. 
a higher light pours through them while that you might be singing on your own as you're doing house chores, driving somewhere, listening to the radio or recording, whatever it is. And that joy is flowing through you because you just love that song. It could be dance that you just love doing. You're not a professional dancer, let's say, but you absolutely love uh, just dancing for fun. And in that moment, you're channeling higher energies through your body and straight into the earth. Anybody else who's there feels it, vibrates with that, moves to that lovely higher vibration. And anybody who is uh, needing a lift, you might say emotionally, even they're, they're within 150 or 100 or more miles, they're going to pick that up if they're at all open to it. So they're pointing out, it doesn't have to be a very organized and very obvious thing that you do every morning or three times a week or once a week. It doesn't have to be like that. It could be very spontaneous, but it could be, it would be something that you really love, something that is going to flow through you and bring you to a moment of joy and, and, or peacefulness. Um, working in a garden, they're saying, as you're communing with the plants, you're channeling higher energies because you are offering them some of your light, not your life energies. You don't give other people your life energies, but as you're bright, as you're joyful and you're looking at the plants or the flowers or vegetables or what have you, you know, the fae are there, the fairy folk are there who work with animals or work with plants and trees and gardens. They're assisting and they're going to be laughing and joking and having a wonderful time because your light is so brilliant and the plants pick up on that as well. Likewise, if you're around children at all or grandchildren, neighborhood children, um, anytime you smile and say hello, you're channeling your higher self and also opening the door for their higher self and for a connection between them and their higher self. So that youngster begins to realize, oh, I'm okay. I'm loved. I'm okay just as I am. I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to get straight A's to be loved. I don't have to be adorably cute, according to everybody else, in order to be loved. Um, I just am. That's all. And so that's what they're pointing out right now. And they're saying the step after that is to be a little more organized and deliberate about it, whereby you're using your love of art. Doesn't Don't have to be professional. Don't worry about that. Or your love of music, playing an instrument or singing, or your love of dance or whatever it is, poetry, um, offering healing energies. If you just love to image people healing, from an illness or animals or anyone healing from an illness, that's very, very helpful. If you think of areas of the world that are troubled, uh, they're saying plant peace there in your mind. Show the people having places to live, food to eat, and utter peace, new homes built, and utter peace coming, and higher assistance, angelic and ET assistance coming to those places. And I can tell you there's a lot of ET and, and angelic assistance going to places like the Gaza Strip or Ukraine or what have you, different places. Um, also places hit by natural disaster. So um, your and my imaging that, huge help, huge help. It's like we're sending out our spirit to that place and we're uh, just bringing in uh, beautiful higher energies. We're channeling that light for specifically for those situations yeah 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 beautiful mm -hmm. I, I really love your answer because it's really how to say um so and then it, it just by being ourselves and embracing our our truth like the contribution can can be like very easy for us to to offer and also um it can be in an unexpected way like you said sometimes it's just with our presence or doing a prayer or so it can be in, in different things uh it's not necessary like being more like visible or spoken um yeah. and um uh, yeah so so also another question when channeling other beings so are this the, the choice is it based on an agreement that we we made before incarnating and also can can that agreement change what i mean is that can we maybe channel some beings as, during a period of time uh, and then it changed to, to others or maybe at the same time? Yes, that's that's a good point as well, uh, Monsef, because um, we do write out in our life charts what we're going to do uh, on this planet and what our goals are, what's important to us to achieve and to learn and to change. 
from what how we've done things in other lives. And yes, absolutely, you can change that life chart. <laughs> you really can. So that might sound kind of funny, uh, but you let your spirit team know. Uh, you can do meditations where you go into the Akashic Records and just see yourself. You can float up into uh, the stacks of uh, scrolls that are there, millions upon millions of them. You'll draw intuitively to the one that is for your life, for this earth life you're in now. Pull that out and open it, and you'll see it's written in a strange language, and it's a light language. And that's okay, and you will intuitively go to the part that you want to change, and you put your hand over the writing, and you say, um, this transforms now to a whole new plan, a whole higher level. And I'm only going to uh, do this instead of this, or I'm going to work with other beings. Generally in channeling, uh, one always has the option to bring in um, other higher beings, because if you really are bringing in someone who is of the higher realms, they don't have an ego at all. If you bring in somebody and they say, no, you're only supposed to work with me, send them into the light, open a portal of light right by you, send them in, say all connection between us, finished, ended, deleted, dissolved for all time, space, all timelines, all parallels, all universes, all dimensions, etc. Toss them into that light, close the portal and concentrate then on really, you know, being in a, a peaceful state, being in a, a happy sort of state. Um, you're not going to bring in a lower entity or somebody who just wants to cause trouble, who's really kind of lying through their teeth about who they are. That's not going to happen if you meditate a bit first and get into a state that's peaceful and open your heart space and just say, um, you know, and angels, will you come and speak through me now or play music or create art through me now? What would you like uh, to create. I welcome you to work through me. Uh, so long as you are of the office of the Christ, which means not Christianity, it means the crystalline uh, consciousness, crystalline energy, uh, which is higher light. So long as you are of divine love and divine light, I've had presences come into the room and I've told them, if you are not of divine love and divine light, you have to leave now and really mean it, really say it like you mean it. But if you're in a peaceful state, you're listening to a guided meditation or higher dimensional music, there's a lot on YouTube, or whatever it is that lifts you, or you're out in nature, you're joyful sitting next to this beautiful old tree, this lovely being, and hearing the birds chirp or the insects, what have you, and your feet are on the ground and you're just, you're so full of joy for for the beauty of nature. In those moments, uh, whoever you bring in, what you draw to you is going to be of the, of the higher uh, realms. But yes, you can absolutely change because nobody of the higher realms is going to say, no, not if they're real, they're not going to say, no, you can't change. No, you can't do something different or call in somebody else. <laughs> No, they're not going to say that because there's no, there's room for everybody. And in, in the higher realms, there's unity, there's oneness. And everybody knows that everyone's interconnected and there's no problem. Nobody has to push their way out front and be the most important person there. Not at all. Not at all. No. So, yes, you can change anything, just about anything in your life chart, including how you feel about things that happened in the past. Maybe you can't change the kind of upbringing you had. I know there's stuff I would 100% love to change, 150% love to change. But what I've worked on is changing how I feel about certain events or situations that were there. And that can actually shift your past. It's sending light into those moments so that the difficulty that you went through uh, really does not trouble you as it once did. So, um, yeah, yeah. That's that's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. It's been my experience. <laughs> yeah. well, beautiful. Thank thank you mm -hmm. for uh, and uh, really the, the the details you gave us about uh, about that. Um, yeah. So it's been it's been really empowering. And would you like me to share anything about the subjects, or do we take questions from the audience? Um, sh I'm sorry. Share anything about what again uh, uh, about this the subjects channeling or uh, 
that's fine if you'd like to that's fine sure okay so, so we can take questions from the audience yes. okay i'm happy to take questions whatever you'd like mm -hmm. okay fine. um so yeah everyone um yeah, if you are on, on Zoom, you can raise your hand by pressing reactions, then raise hand. And you can also type your question on the chat boxes on Zoom and on YouTube. So, uh, Erica, can you please unmute yourself? Hi, thank you very Hi. much, both of you. Um, I've been working with opening my third eye and um, I'm noticing different headaches and I'm wondering if they're related or if you're able to tell me if the headaches are due to something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Monsef, would you like me to go into channeling mode to answer these questions? Is that all yeah, right? Yeah, of course. Collective? Yeah. Um, okay, I'm just going to bring them in, Erica, and I'll bring in your spirit team as well. How long has this been happening, hon? Um, I've just been noticing the headaches the last couple of weeks, and I didn't used to have them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people getting headaches right now, but the collective will talk to you about that. So um, energies are mind blowing. So I'm just going to bring them in one moment. Well, greetings, dear ones. We are very pleased to have this time to speak with all of you today. And so this dear one is asking about uh, the headaches or something that feels like them. And yes, is it occurring in the forehead, Del one near the, say the sinuses, the middle of the head, etc., cetera, uh, where the third eye chakra is? Are you finding that's, that's where they need to be? Actually, I mean, right now it's more like the middle, um, middle of the head down the uh -huh. sides. All right, all right, wonderful. Let's ask your beautiful spirit team. Namaste, dear ones. They're always with you, and they're here. And we're going to ask them, could you enlighten us? And um, we do defer to each person's spirit team because, of course, you're your own authority, your higher self is. And we just relay a bit and work with you energetically. These energies are extremely high, as our writer was saying. But let's ask your team, is it the energies? Um, all right. Okay. All right. Some of this is really, in a sense, all of it is ascension symptoms. They're pointing out you're doing work in the etheric now, in your sleep state, and you've been asking um, the not only your um, soul family and your spirit team, but just asking the universe in general, I'd like to move forward, I would like to grow more um, and uh, advance more in terms of what I see and what my energetic capabilities are, using or manipulating or working with energy so that I can assist others, but also so I can uh, mold events to occur on a higher level. Not only in your own life, but in other words, you'd be transmitting this, both the information about the empowerment that everyone has the capability if they wish to take that on and accept it. Everyone has the capability of working with energy around them. You don't have to just accept what is. You can just say, um, well, I do accept it to the degree, degree that it has presented a beautiful um, moment for me to lift this situation higher. So I'm not going to struggle against this uh, noisy neighbor situation or the car not working properly, what have you. But I'm going to lift things to a higher level in terms of how I see it and in terms of how I deal with it. I'm going to exude love both for the neighbor and for the car. And I'm going to uh, seek solutions on a higher level. Now, as you are doing that, and you're integrating these incredibly high energies. Um, understand that actually the, the brain itself, including the skull and the skeletal structure, are shifting. And that can create feelings of pressure. It can create feelings of opening or aches and pains. There are different reasons for these, of course. Sometimes people have actual medical issues. Um, your team are saying they don't see that really in your case. They see you integrating energies on a higher level and taking in. Um, you might say it's almost like a morphic 
cloud. It's almost like it's sort of um, a new field of potentials. And you're taking that into the third eye and you're taking it into your spirit um, and dancing with that in the spirit realm and saying, what else is possible? You know, that lovely question that people will ask at times. And it's not because they hate what they see. It's because they want a more expansive experience. So this is uh, an energy workers uh, step forward for you that's all it's one chapter they're saying it's not definitive it won't last forever but you're both integrating the higher energies and also uh opening up to using your capabilities in you in higher ways so does that resonate at all dear one yes it absolutely does is there anything in particular i need to do differently or just keep being with it and go with mm -hmm. the flow all right. Um, your team are saying uh, meditate. If you don't already meditate each morning for at least 10 or 15 minutes, uh, start doing that because because what's that what that's going to do is open up the day ahead for higher goings on is how they're putting it. Beautiful. Thank Pardon you. Uh, yes. Put, uh, putting everything on a higher level energetically even before you step out the door or begin your day's work, if you work at home or whatever it is, uh, it's just going to move things up to a higher, you're going to see things differently. You're going to more likely see the world through the eyes of your higher self. And you're going to get nudges during the day of ways in which you can work with the energy of a situation to lift it higher. Yes. And it's a lifelong journey, but it's a beautiful journey. Yes, indeed. Oh, thank you. Of course, to have many blessings. Beautiful. Thank you, Erica. And uh, also thank you, Caroline, for the guidance. And uh, yeah, we have a question from Jean. About six months ago, I was in a reading with a spirit mentor who advised me that my guides wanted me to rewrite my life story. Is this what you were just talking about, Caroline? Changing my story in my Akashic records, perhaps even elevating my, um, my soul mission, life purpose? Mm. All right, what is this first one's, uh, dear one's first name? Jean. Jean? Going to yes. call in Jean's team. Greetings, dear one. Um, has the life purpose shifted or has it opened up? All right. They're saying it hasn't so much shifted as that it's, you're seeing more of it, dear one. It's getting revealed to you. It's opening up. Listen intuitively. And always ask yourself, they're pointing this out, always ask yourself, what brings me joy? What do I love doing? And some of this might involve a paid work or business or energy practice. And some of it is just going to be you going through your day. One's life purpose pours out of one. It doesn't have to be something that you, you know, hang a shingle on the, on the front door about and say, yes, this is what I'm doing now. Um, it can be quiet, but it's still powerful. And so I just wonder if they're going to reveal any more. There are things in your life that are changing. If you feel the need to reorganize, whether it's belongings or how you spend your time or who you spend time with, listen to that. Yeah, they're just encouraging you clear out. Anything in your home that you don't need, give things away or recycle or what have you. Uh, we would say this to everyone. And just be aware uh, that um, how you spend your time now is going to really affect you energetically. Watch carefully. Be careful about what you watch on television or Internet or what have you. You're very, um, they're saying you're a bit absorbent about energies so you don't want to take in things that are going to bring your vibration down or um, put you on a sort of a trajectory that is not really for your higher good in terms of how you feel about life and the images that are flowing through so that's what they're saying right now Del one and they want you to you know occasionally write down what you would love to do in life what you feel your life purpose is, what is important to you, and just let all that come forward, all right? Just let that flow from you, and that's a form of channeling. Just say, higher self, what am I doing here? What's my life purpose? Please speak through me. And then just start writing very automatically and see what happens, dear one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. 
Thank you so much, Caroline. And also thank you, Dean, for your question. And um, yeah, we have more questions uh, and we will take more in a little bit. Uh, just before that, I would love if we if we can talk about the uh, the programs we are offering. We have intro to channeling program and also the 12 strand uh, DNA program as well. And I invite everyone to visit the page yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Caroline, yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Caroline, C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E. Or you can click on the special offer button, which is on the live event page, later on the replay page, the link also on YouTube video description and on the chat boxes on Zoom and YouTube. So yeah, so Caroline, I would love if you can tell us about these two programs. Absolutely. Yes, we'll bring our writer back now. Namaste. Okay, so um, yes, the programs, you know, the Intro to Channeling program is brand new, and it does have these four, um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's, it's four videos, and each one handles a different area, including um, that I will, in the fourth video, just sort of describe some of my own experiences so that people can benefit from that in case you were wanting to do it professionally or just, you know, to answer questions you might have. Um, in the first video, it's about going straight from the start. What kind of being, who would you like to channel from? And you can start with your higher self, absolutely. But there's a meditation journey and to speak with the soul and light being who is our beautiful sun soul. And then you're going to open in that meditation journey, the door to connecting with the higher beings who are best for you to channel from. And in the second video, um, you know, we talk about going into that calm and meditative state that uh, we've been talking about here today. And I think the collective mentioned as well, um, where channeling can happen very easily, but also just on uh, a beautiful higher level. You want to be calm. You want to feel positive. You don't want to try to channel when you're upset or fed up with life. Um, if you are doing that, it's best that you be very practiced at learning to get very calm first and then bring in the beings you usually bring in and they will come in, but just calm yourself down. If you're very new at channeling and are wanting to bring somebody in, um, get calm first, absolutely. And of course, it can be through any kind of um, modality, uh, art, music, speaking, healing, um, it could be anything, such as the higher selves were saying. Uh, some people just, um, through being joyful, know how to bring through higher energies. And uh, it's absolutely wonderful. It, it's a beautiful contribution to the earth. It really is. Um, and we'll have an energy clearing to release interfering energies and entities and past life trauma or current life trauma which can keep your vibration low and can interfere with uh, connecting with your higher self, feeling you have a higher self, being assured that they love you and, um, you know, uh, starting to connect with that being and asking them about things you're experiencing right now. And then I share a bit as well. And then um, video three, module three, you're re practicing receiving telepathically. So we can start with a being or we can start just with a crystal, a plant or an animal. What energies are you wanting to bring in? What kinds, what areas of wisdom are most important for you now? It's always going to relate to where you are. It's never going to be just this obscure, uh, very generalized sort of thing where uh, anybody coming in just doesn't care about how you're doing. They care a great deal. So we'll go into meditation to work with the presences in the higher realms to familiarize ourselves with that, what that feels like, as well as working with, say, a pet, a uh, crystal, a plant, something or something nearby that you can really... Um, connect with and start to feel the presence of with and you don't have to lose yourself in this you are still there you're not giving over who you are to this person or this these beings you're connecting with you're who you are and you're not losing that if anything they should uh, brighten who you are and help you to feel even better about life and then we'll do talk about finding your preferences as far as different uh, formats and then in the fourth video I share a bit 
um, importance of practicing uh, before you attempt to channel for someone else. I, I practiced for a good year or more uh, before I started bringing for other people. People will naturally gravitate to you once you know that you can channel. Natural to feel doubtful. Am I just imagining this? Uh, you're talking to their higher self and you're wondering, should I mention this? Maybe I made it up, you know, <laughs> very, very common. No worries. Uh, everybody gets that imposter syndrome moment. I occasionally will still feel that after 10 years of channeling for people. Absolutely bizarre, but it happens. And so, um, yeah, uh, running a business, if you want to do that, beautiful programs, wonderful books and videos out on being a spiritual entrepreneur. It's just a matter of finding the ones you resonate with and um, connecting with business ideas that flow well with you and that make sense for what you yourself are doing. And so, um, okay, clearing our energies, cutting cords, releasing the victor savior paradigm, releasing the compulsion to rescue other people. Now that's been kind of a big deal for me because um, I have gone through life finding it very hard to, um, to see other people in pain and I've wanted to alleviate that pain and I have unconsciously taken on what other people are experiencing at times and it's something to come out of it's a sign that you yourself have been traumatized and you find it hard to deal with your own pain therefore when you see somebody else in pain it triggers you etc solving everybody's problems for one thing you and I don't have those resources and we don't have that kind of time on the planet secondly and more importantly that's not what we're here for respecting another person's path including their challenges is one of the most important things you and I can do in this life as well as respecting and loving our own path however difficult that might be so um yeah releasing that there's something else we talk about. And then the fifth video is a live Q&A, live Zoom call. And you'll get the link for that as soon as you purchase the program. And that'll be on May 30th. And, um, you know, I'll bring in the collective and your spirit team. They're going to ask, answer your questions about your personal channeling journey and anything that might you might feel is getting in the way. It might not be a direct channeling question. It might be, why do I still feel so sad at times or why am I struggling with this or that or um, maybe I want to earn my money this way but I have money blocks and I've got this old-fashioned belief if you're doing spiritual work you shouldn't be earning money by it you should give it away for free I it, to begin with when I started this work I had a few people text or or not text email me and say you're charging for spiritual work <laughs> I had to say if you're not going to pay my bills friend somebody's got to do it <laughs> so um we'll talk about that as well but anything that kind of gets in your way whatever your spiritual um work and your path is going to be and then th there's a members portal on my website as soon as you purchase the program you get the um you get the password to that so there's the whole program and these videos are only about 30 minutes long. There's also MP3s if you prefer that. And just, you know, just enjoy. I'm here. If you've got questions, just email me. And um, then we've got that Zoom meeting on the 30th for May of May for answering things that are just uh, you're just a bit stuck on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's also the second package, which is an amazing program that I did very recently, the 12 strand DNA calling the power of the gold frequencies. What's coming into the planet now, you probably know this, are powerful golden light frequencies. And they're little golden light particles like gold dust. And they carry a beautiful tonal vibration and they also carry the power of transformation in them. And as they come into the earth, they're transforming everything. So you see all this tumult and chaos going on in our earth politically, militarily, economically, socially, on and on. It's because the old pain, the old density is releasing. I've even asked a white knight of the Ashtar command about this because I was very confused and upset. And I, at one point, not overtly upset, but just impatient. And I just said, it's the fifth dimension we're in now. Why all this awfulness? And he said, well, because it's it's all releasing. So we go into the these uh, beautiful meditation journeys with the collective where we journey into the sun. We are in the golden pyramids. It within the sun, the sun is not just a ball of fire. There's openings in it, ships coming and going through stargates and portals and beautiful constructions, beautiful temples and, and these beautiful pyramids. 
you go inside and you're going to receive um, symbolic connection. There's symbols on the walls. You'll be drawn to place your hand on one of those symbols. It has a beautiful download for you. You'll meet guides who are beautifully supportive and helpful. And um, there's a Q&A, which is from the original, which you'll probably relate to. It's from the original live uh, webinars, etc. So there's a lot. Again, that's a members portal. You get your password and you can access everything. And if you've got any questions, just email me. But these are life-changing, highly transforming um, experiences for anybody. And when you go into that meditation journey, it's live, it's real. You're coming out of space and time. You're not trapped in time. You're traveling with all of us in that moment that we traveled. And it's, um, it's, it's just very, very beautiful. So those are the two programs. You can get both or one or, or neither, it's up to you. Um, but I, I find them very, very helpful. Uh, the, particularly um, if you're opening to channel, you will need some support. And if you're, there are things in your life you wanna transform, uh, the golden pyramids are, are a perfect place to start, yes. So I'll hand that talking stick back to you, Lanza. Thank you. Yeah, uh, th thank you. Thank you so much, Caroline. Um, yeah. Yeah, the both programs feel really, really exciting. And I love like the, the subjects that you will be approaching and how you structure that because it's I feel it can really help to for example channeling approaches from a safe space. Um <clears throat> and also how, how to do this, uh like going through the first steps with more ease and uh having a deeper connection with either our higher selves or or the beings we are channeling, and also including the your own. Uh, stories uh i think that's very very inspiring very helpful especially when we hear someone who has been ex a very long experience channeling and they've been through different experiences so we know um or maybe uh, some experiences will reflect what we are having right now or what we, are, what we are going through so thank you so much and thank you for the energies you put into this because there is also energy work uh, involved in that and uh, yeah, so grateful to you for offering those two programs. And um, yeah, again, everyone, you can sign up for uh, programs or them on the link yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Caroline, yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Caroline, um, C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E. Or you can click on the special offer button, which is on the live events page later on the replay page. And uh, also the link is on YouTube video, video description and on the chat boxes on Zoom and YouTube. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, um, yeah, I just want to quickly say, Kathy, Kathy Shiraz, I did, Caroline. Well. Yeah. Yes, go ahead, Bonsef. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, Kathy Shiraz, I did, Caroline's 12 strand DNA. It is positively transformational. I highly recommend this program. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. And um, so, yeah, can we? Continue with the questions from the audience. Yes, that's fine. I'll bring the collective back in. And then go ahead. Thank you. Um, hello, Caroline, and hello, everyone. My name is Ziab, and thank you very much for giving me a chance to ask some questions. Um, I would like Welcome to back. ask my higher self a very spe specific question regarding to my uh, the human career in this planet Earth right now. So um, before I ask a question, I would like to give a very short story background that three years ago, I am guided to um, work with um, spiritual healing. And I have my own healing practice uh, for two and a half years. Uh, and I did hypotherapy, channeling, sound healing. Everything went really smooth. And then one day, I just feel like I want to move to another country close to nature. And I close that healing practice. But I feel it's very good. Need I want I need to do, and then right now when I'm in nature already I have, I feel like what I be in what I need to do I feel like it is not the right one, and I'm start looking for like a job in a human job again, but of course I did not have success and I did not really have a job for almost two years already, and I feel like um what can I do right now. What is the path that lead me to my my life right now? So I would like to ask my higher self a very specific question. What kind of job can I do right now? And what would my higher self would advise me right now? Thank you very much. All right. 
Many blessings, dear one. We are very pleased to have this time to speak with you today. And so what sort of work have you been drawn to in the past, dear one? Because what you feel naturally good at or comfortable with is extremely important. I uh, The first healing task that I have done is channeling. It came to me very naturally. And then after that, I did um, um, ayahuasca ceremony. It also came to me very naturally. Um, all, everything I did related to spiritual healing, it just came to me very naturally. Mm -hmm. um, however, of course, um, yes, yeah, it's difficult. Did, did you feel fulfilled by that? Were others helped? Did you feel at home in that sort of work? I do, yes, I absolutely do. But my challenge is how can I even um, continue that kind of work? Because, you know, um, it's difficult for me to, you know, marketing that service as well. And also uh, where I'm located um, in the Netherlands, they also have new laws and regulation, you know, to block our scar. So that kind of thing that, you know, what I feel into is not allowed in the human earth. So that's what the contrast in me. One side, my heart feel like is what I want to do and I, what I feel like to do. And the other side, I know that I'm still inhuman and I still, you know, follow the rule and regulation. So I have right. a contrast within me about that. All right, dear one, why do you feel it's not allowed in the human sense and on the earth? Why do you feel that? Um, because, for example, uh, when I uh, host like Awaska ceremony, it is not allowed to perform that in the Netherlands because Awaska is prohibited in the Netherlands, that kind of stuff. So yes. there's uh, some uh, form uh, of healing is not allowed in certain country, especially yeah. the one I'm living in right now. All right. Um, and yet being an energy worker, dear Juan, is so much bigger than any one ritual or ceremony or orientation. Let's see what your team are saying, um, because they're saying you're sort of, um, you use energies to, to heal people in a way. Are you aware of that? I'm sorry, what's the question again? Have you, have you felt, are you aware, of, your team are saying that the way you work with energies, you are capable of assisting people energetically as to re remove certain patterns, certain energy patterns in the body or in the mind or emotions so as to heal them. Are you aware of that? They're saying that's something that you are capable of doing. No, I'm not aware of that. We would say, um, are you able, in your country though, you're able to uh, have a an energy healing practice, isn't that right? Um, if yes. You have, that hasn't been outlawed or anything. So um, we would say, look into that, look into different healing modalities that you can study and that see what flows for you. Look at different ones and you, you doesn't necessarily take a lot of time or money to uh, be, you know, trained in, in one of them. Um, there's quantum healing, there's quantum touch, um, matrix, reconnection, etc. There's many different kinds. Uh, but um, they're saying, for one, even just getting a little bit of training is going to open a door inside of you and you're going to create your own modality. That ability is there. It's in your soul family. It's in you. You've come in with it and you've somewhat sidestepped it a bit for different parts of your life. You knew it was there when you were tiny, when you were a very small child and you had fun. You could see energy patterns and you had fun manipulating, moving them around and changing the the, the code inside of them, the colors, the shapes, et cetera, the symbols. And you just played with them. It was absolutely delightful for you as a baby and a toddler. And this is just great fun for you. And then as you got older, you put it to one side because, you know, you feel like, oh, well, that's not a real job or it just gets conditioned out of children. Uh, but they're saying you're very capable. They want you to concentrate on, um, on on energy work and you don't have to do anything that's outlawed. Not at all. 
but you can be an energy worker pretty much anywhere in the world. And as far as marketing goes, you can learn about that. There are, there are wonderful programs and wonderful uh, videos and books out on how to uh, market your work as a spiritual entrepreneur. Um, Colette Baron reed has programs and... Um, Lee Harris has a program and there's just even just getting a book or start reading online articles. It's not difficult. It's just that it's learning the left brain aspect. So people will know that your work is there. That's all it is. It's letting people know you're there and you're ready to help. All right, Dewa. And you can get coaching. Thank you very that. much. Yes, indeed. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Many thank you, Indiep. Uh, much love and uh, yeah, also thank you very much, Caroline, for uh, and uh, the connection for all the information. And uh, let's see, we have a question from Bill on YouTube Do you have any pointers regarding automatic writing? All right, let's bring in the still one's energy or pardon, <laughs> spirit team. Um, well, they're saying and this can happen to anyone, that what can happen with um, the automatic writing is that people will sometimes doubt that it really is flowing through them and they'll think, well, I'm manipulating it or maybe I'm just imagining this or that. They're suggesting writing with the non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, you're gonna hold that pen in the left hand and you're going to ask a question to begin with, right at the top of the page, um, what happened when I was small that I believe this or that, you know, fill in the blank, ask a question, or what happened in a past life that this seems to be an issue for me. And then switch the pen to the non-dominant hand and just let the story come out. And do not be intimidated by the process, dear ones. Be aware the subconscious is always ready to speak and to let you know what it's holding. And what it holds is full memory of every life you've ever lived on this and other planets, star systems, dimensions, etc. Just be aware that it's got its chock full of stories it wants to share. And the, it, really 90% of what runs your life is your subconscious. So this will answer a great deal. But let your that hand just move. Let yourself write. Don't stop to correct, uh, you know, grammar or phrasing or punctuation. The handwriting might look a bit squiggly because it's the non-dominant hand, but just let it come forward and, and don't be intimidated by the process. Don't be troubled by it. Just let it happen. Even if it seems like what you're writing is nonsense at first, that's okay. Something's going to come through that you need to, to see. And it can be a past life self, could be your child self, it could be your higher self, it could be a lot of things. But just specify uh, only divine truth, please. Only that which is for my higher good. And um, and then give it a whirl. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Caroline. And uh, thank you, Bill, for your question. And yeah, we still have a little bit more time. So, Jean, can you please unmute yourself? Jean, yes. No. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. All righty. Hey, Caroline. Uh, yeah actually had a couple readings with you probably a decade ago <laughs> Indeed. so i hope i've evolved a little since then <laughs> absolutely do. and your channeling is still very very accurate you you channel a very good team so i want to commend you on your work on that so um Excuse me. I've in my life, it's kind of like I've done a 360. You know, I was raised Catholic, got into the church, got born again, all this. And, and I mean, I know scripture incredibly. Mm -hmm. So I fell away from that, got a divorce, fell away from that um, in and fell away from the church and got out into all this energy work. And, you know, listened to Bashar and Abraham. And I mean, I've read in you know, I just studied sacred geometry. Um, I teach people how to how to meditate, how to get into the holy of holies. Um, <clears throat> but what's happened over the last year, year and a half, is a couple people that I've started listening to. One who has showed me that the scriptures are—it's totally a mythology book, and everything is 
you know, it has a, a, a meaning, you know, like G when Jesus said, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you're, he's telling you to operate from the right side of your brain. The whole book is like that. So mm -hmm. I've also run into a, a channeled book called Anne, Grandmother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And oh my freak, I mean, that book is awesome. I mean, oh, it so resonates with me. And it's like my first response is, man, if I could just get in the churches, pin them to their benches, mm -hmm. and just open your mind a little bit, and when I'm done, you'll know that Yeshua was one of the most powerful beings that ever walked this earth. Just, oh, I mean, so I have a, a couple questions uh they're all it's all related for the collective <clears throat> so this is really part of my being and, and i want to start a retreat center out on some land because i'm really getting tied to animals and and the earth i mean it's my mother it's just i mean life is just things are opening up at an incredible rate and um so i've been thinking about taking the message of Anne in that book and doing maybe classes like that online or I've been thinking about possibly trying to work my way possibly into churches with this, you know, a message. Uh, and, um, you know, st I'm about to start the retreat center, the financing of it through crowdfunding and that. Um, mm -hmm. Where is my time going to be best spent? And they'll know that I'm an idea guy and I can go from one thing to another. I want to focus where... For the real reason, I know I'm an I'm an, a healer because I've studied what Yeshua did. Um, so, what do you, what do they think is my next steps? Is the retreat center something I should put on the back burner, or you understand? Well, our team are here, Delwan, and what they're pointing out is yes, you are an energy worker, which is wonderful. You are a natural teacher and speaker, and you have keyed into a great deal. You've got you're sort of the link between the church over here and then the new age crowd over here. And you're saying, let's rethink this, shall we? This <laughs> two thousand years of misunderstanding, broadly misunderstanding, um, in terms of who Yeshua was, and certainly he did live, and uh, Mary Magdalene, his wife did live and it is divine compliment and um you know many in the bible were real uh, this isn't to take away from the power of the symbols in the bible you're right it's chock full of astounding symbology now and uh, symbolism but um your team are pointing out to begin with they would love for you to rent see if you can rent a space to hold retreats in rather than building one to begin with all right and the crowdfunding can assist with that but uh, they're saying go a little more slowly. And they're saying the largeness of your vision has you caught up in a lot of energy. And you're going to get, if you're not careful, swept up in a kind of vortex of energy in which um, you're not so much emphasizing the teachings as emphasizing this whole new area of work and this whole new area of expression. Um, if you don't have a website yet, we would say get one and start putting blogs on it and start expressing um, who you are and what you are offering to people and you, these beautiful ideas, which will be very new to many. And if you don't have a YouTube channel, you might want to think about that as well, so that you're offering teaching, say only 12, 15 minutes long, but you're just offering ideas to people. You're saying, how about if we look at it this way, or this is how I interpret this? And <coughs> as the link between the conservative or traditional church and its dogma and uh, this new era that humanity is, is experiencing as, as one of the links, what you want to do is simply shine your light powerfully, they're saying, and let those who are going to be open to your teachings and open to your particular viewpoint that you have uh, brought in from others as well as experience for yourself, let them come to you rather than going directly into the churches because what honestly we can tell you dear one the church as a construct is fading it is dissolving and though many people for instance in the united states still do go to churches many are leaving 
out of a feeling of uh, it's become something that I cannot support. And that's a whole huge issue we will not go into right now, but you probably know what we're alluding to, that there's been a mix of politics and religion, particularly over the last uh, 40 yeah. years, since that is not um, positive for anyone. So um, what they're saying is, is start with offering energy work so that you are just offering intellectual ideas to people, but you're offering assistance in helping them throw off the chains that religion put upon them and that their own sense of smallness, their own ego put upon them. And you're also offering them uh, an outlook, a perspective, which they can move into if they wish. They want you to be very careful that you don't present it or accidentally create a new dogma. Be careful that with your reference to churches, you're not accidentally copying them <laughs> in some way. And so um, there is that, dear one. It's a, it's a big issue, but that's what we would have for you today, to go more slowly and to offer your energy uh, sessions, if you're not already, and, and the website, and the YouTube channel, and just start um, with that online presence so people can relate to that before they put down money to work with you in person in a physical place. And that seems to be the paradigm now. Yes, indeed. So we would just give you that for now, Dilma. Thank you. Most assuredly. And yeah. bless us. On the right track. <laughs> thank you, Jean. Uh, and also thank you very much, uh, Caroline and uh, the collective for the guidance. And we have a question on YouTube from Irieta. I was able to receive answers, better say to communi communicate with my body and higher self, but not anymore as such. What my higher self wants me to know about this. Thank you. All right, Delwan. Let's call in this Delwan's higher self and team. There's a blockage there. Yeah, there is. But ancestors in the way who feel that you're not doing the right thing, we're going to tell them stand back. Right now, stop this interference immediately. Stop it immediately. Stand back. Stop it. Any and all blockages, opening a portal of light, moving you as well, dear one, into the violet fire of Saint Germain. It's a cool flame. It just transmutes, doesn't burn. It just transmutes everything to a higher level, all right? So image yourself in that beautiful, cool violet flame. And that's just going to transmute a lot. Let go of this. Some part of your psyche is remembering something from other lives as well. Just pulling old trauma out of you. Um, you had visions. You saw things. You shared them with people. And they were convinced you were possessed or something else going against the dogma of the day. Just release. That's right. Into the light. Into that light. Let it go. All right, and we're going to say to this higher self, can this still one still hear inwardly or is there another form of channeling your presence that is needed? Um, your higher self is saying, go one, just go into a meditative state. And for now, just practice feeling their presence, feeling that peacefulness and knowing they're there. And practice feeling their presence throughout the day. If you're driving or walking somewhere, you're walking with them beside you. Just practice feeling their, their beautiful presence with you. If you can't feel it, that's okay. Image it or just move your hand if you're not good at imaging. So as to say, they're right behind, they're right beside me. They're right here. And just keep talking to them. Um, yeah, writing might work for you. Again, it might be better to write with the, the non-dominant hand. Just asking, will you come through in words, dear ones? All right, yeah, interferences. This is something we'll work on as well in the program. Just tossing all that into that portal of light. Move along. Nope, nope. You don't belong here. Move into the light. Let's go. Let's go right now. You're done here. You're done. Nope. All that's finished. All that's finished. Let's go. Let's go. No, old contracts. See all these old contracts to be quiet, to not share your intuitive realizations, to not connect with your higher self, to not feel elevated spiritually, all of that fearfulness, pour all those old contracts just pouring out of your heart space and going into that beautiful flame so that they dissolve into pure light. No more of that. There we go. And there. Wonderful. 
bringing in a lot of light for this Dao in the heart space. Bringing your higher self in closer and closing that portal. Wonderful. There we are. Bringing the essence of your higher self into your heart space and we're offering this to everyone who is open to such. You can feel the beauty of that love and support. All right, Del Juan, so you want to meditate, get into that beautiful, peaceful calm, and then just say to your higher self, I want to feel your presence, please. Just let me know you're here, whether you speak through me or not, whether I'm able to write words that you're offering or to get ideas from you or to hear you inwardly. Doesn't matter, I just want to know you're there. And so we would start with that, Del Juan. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, uh, the collective. And also thank you, Irieta, for your question. Um, let's see. Yeah, maybe we'll take one more question from uh, Pippa. Can you please unmute yourself? Hello. Can you hear Hello. me? Yes, indeed. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm just really wanting to know why uh, my house hasn't sold. It's been... Basically, I've been wanting to set up a retreat. I'm here in the UK and I was going to set up a retreat near Glastonbury, but I'm not sure that's going to go ahead. Um, I, I have this property, but each time I try to sell it, the sales keep falling through. And then mm. I've, my sale was just about to go through. And a couple of days ago, it, sells, it fell through again. It's like... I don't know something's stopping me from selling my house and then buying this space to open a retreat. So I don't know what is going on. All right, Del Juan. Calling in your higher self, your guides, angels, namaste, dear ones. I'm going to ask, is it the house itself? Is it holding on to its current owner? Or is this dear one being stopped in some way from from working in this retreat center, opening, you know, buying new property, et cetera. Hmm. All right, why is that? Why is there interference? Ah, uh, are these ancestors? Are these dark entities? What are they? Hmm. All right. All right, dear one, we want you to see all soul contracts, all old oaths, vows, agreements, commitments flying out of your heart space and going into that beautiful violet flame of St. Germain. You've got an old agreement in place that is holding you back. And it's a group as well. This is a past life com connection. And we're going to say to them, uh, look at this. You see all these old agreements, including the one this dear one had with you? It's in the violet flame. It's transmuted to pure light. It no longer exists. You no longer have a hold on this dear one. You cannot stop her from doing her work and you cannot interfere any longer. This has to stop now. Do you understand us? It has to stop now. No, it's finished. Absolutely not. It's finished. Opening a portal of light and you're going into it, all of you, right now. She no longer belongs to your group and you feel you're protecting her or holding her in an old vow to your spirituality and your precepts and your paradigms and dogma, but all of that's over. It's done, it's completely done. You see that light? You're going into it right now. That's it, finished, done, deleted. That's it, into the portal and closing the portal. We want you to spend the next day or two imaging all of these contracts, oaths, vows, commitments, agreements, packs, etc. Fly out of your heart space and go into that violet flame, dear one. Hundreds and hundreds of them from every life you've ever lived, particularly those who have those ones that have connected you to spiritual groups, to religions, to anything political, to anything patriarchal that says, oh, no, you're a woman. You can't do that. You can't speak. You can't be an authority spiritually and on and on. All of it into that beautiful violet flame. And in fact, all of the agreements, because that's 3D and you're in 5D now. And your team is saying the sale should go through, but you've got to dissolve those old associations. Absolutely. And you're on your way. We've already given you a lift for that. All right, dear one. 
Wow, that's amazing. I feel there's like real hot heat and my heart expanding. So that is right. absolutely fabulous. I can really feel the energy of the heaviness lift and the heart expanding and this heat, heat. So that is amazing. Thank you so much, so much uh, for your blessings, for the wonderful uh, gift. Of course, dear one, we do suggest you listen to this clearing a few more times, all right? The five, yeah. eight is not too many because you probably have other connections as well from other lives. So listen to it a number of times and um, keep affirming, I'm free, I do whatever and let the house know as well. Put your hand on the wall of the house, bless it and say you're free to go, dear one. Thank you for everything you've given me, but I'm going to move on now. All I right? do that. I already do that. Very good. Very good. Excellent. <laughs> you're well Brilliant. ahead. Thank you, because my cat got run over recently. Oh. Um, so um, I thought that might have helped me be free, but I don't know. Is there anything about that? The cat died and it was like one eye was burst out. Is there something I wasn't seeing? Was he trying to tell me something? Um, let's just see quickly what, what that. What was the cat's name, Dewan? Kit. Kit, all right. Kit. Well, Kit was only there with you uh, for a little while, they're saying. To That's you... right. Less than a year. He died. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. To help you shift from one chapter to the next. So it was an energy shift that Kit was assisting you with. And they weren't ever going to stay for very long. Oh, no. bless him. Okay. Now you'll see him again if, if you're meant to. No worries. And he still watches over you in the higher realms, as many animals will. And um, no no problem. But you had a contract that way. You had an agreement that way. Yes. Blessings. Thank you so much for that. That's really been amazing. I'm really grateful. Thank you. Thank you, both oh, of you. Many blessings. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you. thank you, Vipa. Much love. And uh, yeah, thank mm -hmm. you so much, uh, Caroline and the collective. For, for the support and guidance and um yeah really thank you for for everything you shared today that was really really powerful call i really loved it uh, all the information uh, that you shared about channeling it was very profound very inspiring and also the the guidance and support you gave to our uh, live callers so thank you so much many blessings dear ones and we'll bring our writer back yeah. namaste well thank you so much Monsaf. It was great fun to be here, and thanks to everybody. Uh, thank you, Linda, and thank you, uh, Melissa, for these lovely comments in the, in the uh, in the chat here. And um, yeah, um, yeah, many such uh, Thank you, Caroline, and yeah. Linda. Such an incredible and powerful call. Thank you so very much. Also, Maria on YouTube. Love everything you are sharing, and um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Kristen, Derek. Mawaka, wonderful. Yeah, it's it's always just, you know, my pleasure to be on these telesummits and to share. So, um, yeah, uh, if, you know, uh, I, I'm hoping that people will get something out of the programs, those who yeah. decide to uh, go that route and um, uh, that just blesses your path. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Caroline. Uh, yeah, always great to watch you and always happy to to connect with you, to have you on on the show, really love your message, your work, and and energy uh, work. It's is just really really powerful. So, uh, thank you again so much, and uh, everyone. Again, you can sign up for uh, one of the two programs uh, Caroline is offering to us, or both of them. We have intro to channeling, and uh, the other one is uh, on the twelfth strength DNA program, and the link is yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Caroline yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash caroline c-a-r-o-l-i-n-e or you can click on the special offer button which is on the live events page later on the replay page the link also on youtube video description and on the chat boxes on zoom and on youtube and uh yeah so so that's everyone i'm sending you so much love and i will see you on the next call bye bye everyone much love